Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is slightly different. I realized I spend a lot of money on food and I wanted to challenge myself to see whether I could spend only 20 pounds for a whole week's worth of shopping. So I decided to challenge my friend David, who's over at Pretty Penny UK, and see whether we could both come up with a week's worth of food planning for only 20 pounds. Hi folks, I'm David. Uh, my channel is all about helping you reach your financial goals with plenty of chat, about frugal living, passive income, investments, and generally making your money work harder for you. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I would love to see you stop by the channel. Challenges are always a lot of fun, so thanks to Anna for teaming up and doing this one with me. It's always good to see how far you can make a small amount of money go when it comes to everyday life. Looking forward to getting this one out there, so yep, enjoy. So once you've finished looking at this one, David's video will be up in a few hours and you can go over and check out his video as well. Bear in mind that I don't eat meat and he does, so we two very different views, but in my opinion, like, we all know it's good to once in a while not eat meat, so hopefully this will inspire you to include some non-meat based products in your diet. So the way that I'm going to structure this video is I'm first going to go through my shopping list, what I purchased and how much it cost. Then I'm going to go through all the things that I made with that shopping list and basically what I ate throughout the week. And then finally I'm going to finish with just a few lessons learned and how this experience has changed the way that I'm going to do shopping going forward. So let's get straight in. So I've got my receipts here, my two main receipts. So I basically spent initially £12.31 in Lidl. I need to add 75p to that because I was going to get oats but I realised I have a huge bag of oats at home but I didn't want to not include that in the price because obviously you might not have oats at home so I had to add that in to the total price and all I'm going to do is measure out how much oats I use and make sure that it would have been enough um, for that 75p. I also need to add £1.80 for the Alpro coconut milk that I use. Again, I had three of them already at home, so I didn't want to purchase another one. That I actually get from Sainsbury's rather than Lidl. There are also no lentils that I could find in Lidl, but again, I had a few cans left over from all the shops, but I found it in Sainsbury's and it was 55p. So again, I'm going to add that 55p. And then I did another shop for £3.95 in Lidl. So when you add all of those things together, it comes to £20.06. I think it's okay that I went over six pence. I actually have quite a lot of food left over. I think that if you were doing this on a longer term basis, the money saved would more than make up for that. So I basically had half the rice, half the pasta, and a bit of bread left over, as well as more than half of the porridge oats. So if I took all of that into account and just halved all the prices, it comes up to about a pound that I've saved for things that I can use in the following week or later on. So as part of this challenge, we decided not to include things like spices and anything like that because those things you tend to buy once and then they last for freaking ages. <laughs> so I didn't want to add that to the price, but I also wanted to be fair. And although I have some balsamic vinegar already, I just added it to the list because I was thinking, well, if you buy like one of these things every time you go shopping, then this is like a good representation of that. So like I used in one of the recipes, balsamic vinegar, some spices and some soy sauce. So, you know, if I got the soy sauce one week and balsamic vinegar another, like, I mean, I've had my balsamic vinegar for ages and I make this recipe quite often. So I thought that was a fair way of doing it, sort of including a pound in the budget for that. Um, but yeah, hopefully you agree. Okay, so I got some spinach, baby spinach. I got a whole bag of carrots, onion, broccoli, garlic, grapefruit juice snack on, three cans of chickpeas, gotta love some chickpeas, some baked beans, two cans of coconut milk, one can of chopped tomatoes, some chestnut mushrooms, and then pasta, rice, and potatoes. So I think there'll be a lot left over at the end of the month, but you know, it's, it's what it is. Um, and some balsamic vinegar. So as I've explained before um, about the condiments, I've included one, um, but things like soy sauce and things, 
um, you'll buy once and then you, you can keep reusing for a long time so I thought buying one is fair um, and then if you buy like one each time it will build up um, so all of this over here came up to you can see the receipt here I'll focus there you go 12 pounds 31 actually the one thing I forgot is the black forest here um, so that is this black forest fruit mix that I'll put in the porridge so here's round two um, I got some lettuce a loaf of bread three bananas some cherry tomatoes a cucumber red kidney beans and then another can of baked beans because I've realized I'm gonna have a whole can um, with the bread so I wanted it for two meals and you can see here I spent £3.95 which is awesome so that's basically it for the shopping I'm now going to show you what I ate and how that all worked out so I actually kept a log of everything in my diary just to make sure that I had everything properly documented I took some videos of the food others I didn't like I didn't want to give you like seven different porridge pictures because <laughs> that would just be boring so if i sort of go through what i ate hopefully you'll get a good view of how you could structure this meal plan so the way that i managed to do it was to have three different breakfasts four different lunches and two different dinners so with my dinners i would basically make a recipe and that would essentially last me for three dinners each time so it's not the most exciting but it works. I'd like to put a bit of a disclaimer on this. I'm not saying that I want to eat like this every week, but what I want to show is that if you're in a situation where you're desperately trying to save money, pay off debt, or whatever like situation that you might be in, a lot of people don't realize that you can actually eat for £20 a week. Like when I've mentioned it to a few people, they were like, really? Like, are you genuinely going to be able to do that? And to be honest, I wasn't sure if I could. So I just want to say that it's one of those things where it is possible if you really try. And I've managed to do it with actually food that's been really tasty and I've been really happy with it. But what I don't want to have is have someone in the comments going like, oh, I wouldn't want to eat porridge every day. Well, I don't like eating porridge every day either, but sometimes you have to do that in order to reach your financial goals. And actually I'm one of those people that just eats the same thing for breakfast pretty much for a long time and then I get bored and then I move on to something else but yeah hopefully that kind of gets the point across of what I'm trying to say pretty much for breakfast almost every day almost I was having porridge so it was basically a mix of porridge with frozen fruit porridge with banana and cinnamon and one time I had beans on toast obviously my porridge I make with the Alpro coconut milk which I mentioned earlier it just makes it tastes a lot nicer and creamier but of course you can make porridge with water to save yourself that £1.80 or get another type of plant milk for cheaper. I just really like the Alpro coconut and I managed to fit it into my budget. For dinners I had two different dinners and you might notice I said I had six dinners because each lasted me three goes so that last dinner would be something that i would normally try to make up from leftovers or things in my cupboard because often there are things left in the cupboard and like i said i had a few things left over in terms of like pasta rice and um, porridge so you know even getting like a 50p pasta sauce and just having that with pasta like that would work too but the two dinners i had was one was a lentil stew recipe which i absolutely love like this is probably my most favorite recipe that I like making. It's really hearty, it's tasty, 
it makes me really full it's so easy to make and like i said it lasts me three goes so i cook it once and then it lasts me for three dinners i will link this recipe down below there are certain things i've made it so many times now i don't really follow the recipe by heart there are certain things i don't add in for example like i think it has like wine or white wine vinegar or something i don't add that it also calls for like dry lentils again that's cheaper but i tend to just use canned lentils because it makes it a lot quicker to make the second dinner that i had was chickpea curry so with this i don't really follow any recipes i just sort of make it myself um you know onion garlic and then chopped tomatoes canned coconut milk and chickpeas and then like spinach and things added to it with loads of different spices so with that it's it's just to put everything together and hope for the best. Again, I've made it a few times, so it's something that I know how to make. There are tons of recipes online that you could have a look at. And then in terms of lunches, I've had pasta salad with chickpeas and vegetables. I've had pasta salad with kidney beans and broccoli. So today's salad is basically the leftover pasta from the last couple days and then I've basically just lightly boiled some broccoli, added the lettuce and the kidney beans and some mayo again with some like spices. So I've put like onion um, powder in and like this like chip seasoning which is basically very like smoked paprika type thing. I've had beans on toast one day and I've had avocado on toast on the last day. And then for snacks, I've had grapefruit and banana. So in terms of what I've learned from this whole experience, it's been quite an eye-opening, interesting experience because I think I've said before, I wasn't quite sure whether £20 for the whole week was a doable budget because like, it's quite embarrassing to admit this now, but I spend about £50 a week on groceries. And now that I know this, like I'm going to make sure that at least one week during the month I'm going to do this £20 thing because that's an extra £30 a month that I could put into stocks. That's like two GSK stocks a month extra. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the first thing is that although there are some things that I'm still going to continue to probably pay a little bit more for in places like Sainsbury's because they just taste better over there. The majority of the stuff tasted no different buying it from Lidl over somewhere like Ocado where I normally do deliveries or Sainsbury's. So as an example, the two things that I actually noticed a difference with were the cherry tomatoes and the potatoes. Those were the only two things that I noticed a difference in the taste and the texture. But then with the things like the rice and the pasta, cucumber, the broccoli, like the tins of stuff, literally no difference and yet like if I'd purchased all those things from Sainsbury's, they would have been so much more expensive. So the other thing is leftovers. I'm normally quite bad with leftovers. I try my best to like eat up leftovers and stuff, but I'm very guilty of, for example, making myself lunch for a couple days and then the next day just being like, mm, I don't really fancy this. Like. I'm just gonna have something else or I'm gonna go and get something like takeout or, or pre-packaged or something like that and this has really taught me that like once you just start eating it it's fine <laughs> I know that sounds really weird but sometimes it's just like I'll be sitting there and going like mm, I don't really fancy that like chickpea pasta but once I'm hungry enough and I start eating it I'm like oh this is actually really nice like I'm happy I'm eating it and not wasting food so I think this is really brought that home. It's also taught me that I don't need to snack as much as I do on a normal basis. Um, that's been really eye-opening because I spend a lot of money on snacks and I'm still gonna buy snacks, I enjoy snacking, but actually the amount of money I was wasting on snacks was probably a lot more than I needed to and probably not good for health reasons as well, so. But yeah, completely the biggest, biggest thing for me has been, it's been so eye-opening seeing just how much cheaper Lidl is to Sainsbury's. Like I always knew that they were like a good cheap supermarket, but I don't think it really hit home how their quality in the majority of products was no less than the Sainsbury's quality. 
and yet the price of my shop was surprisingly, surprisingly low. So I think going forward, I'm definitely gonna be shopping for a lot of my food shopping, shopping for a lot of my shopping. Um, but you know what I'm trying to say. I'm going to be doing a lot of my shopping going forward in places like Lidl and Aldi and then just buying the things that actually make a difference in quality from Sainsbury's. Hopefully that's been of some use to you and you will go away thinking, I'm gonna save some money on my food shopping. So thank you if you've made it this far. Again, thank you so much for supporting my channel and see you in the next video. Bye.